to introduce our next guest, Trisha Shimamura. Welcome, Trisha. Thank you. Trisha was born and raised in the West Coast, between Southern California and Reno, Nevada. Though she grew up in a considerably low-income low environment, her parents, and especially her mother, always encouraged her to give back to the community. As a first-generation college graduate, after college, Trisha moved to New York City and pursued a master's degree in social work at NYU. As a social worker, she focused on community development and service, and this led her to work with Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. She ultimately became deputy chief of staff in her district office, where she focused on local issues like the Second Avenue subway, MTS, and the East River Esplanade. Last year, Trisha left Congresswoman Maloney's office and took a position at Columbia College, where she works in the Office of Government and Community Affairs, and she continues to work with elected officials on the city, state, and federal level, and talks about issues that affect the university students and researchers. Welcome again, Tusha. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here. So it looks like since a very young age, you've been someone destined to work in public service. <laughs> Why don't you tell a little bit about that? Well, I don't know about public service, but uh, certainly my parents, and especially, like I said, my mom raised us with uh, a real understanding that whatever we have, we should always be trying to give back and uh, give back to our communities. I remember countless years of spending Mother's Day and my mom's birthday and Thanksgiving serving in uh, either homeless shelters or soup kitchens. And I think that those experiences really stuck with me. Even through college, I always kind of thought that I would be doing something in community development, something in community service. And uh, after I finished up my degree in social work, I knew that I wanted to do something working in on the macro level, working on in a district of some kind. And uh, thankfully, I was able to find a pl place at uh, working for Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Sounds great. Yeah. So it looks like because of Congresswoman uh, Maloney's office, that was your first introduction to community boards. Yeah, it was. So tell us a little bit about what tasks it involved with you having to work, I believe, um, in the four, six, and eight community boards? Yep. So uh, what I love about community boards is not just that they allow community members to work together to advocate on issues that affect their neighborhoods, but they also act uh, as a real education source for people to really understand the kind of basic fundamentals of government. Um, you can come to a community board uh, just off the street and talk about that street light that you really want to be fixed and someone can tell you, you know, who is in charge of transportation issues on the city level. Or you can talk about um, maybe an immigration issue that you've been noticing in your community and someone else can talk to you about what, uh, what's going on there on the city, state, and federal level. So uh, as a le community liaison for Congresswoman Maloney's office, I worked for years uh, representing her office and attended those meetings, talked with constituents. Uh, I was able to gauge the temperature of uh, various issues in the community and how uh, her constituents felt about certain issues and so that we were always responsive and uh, could best represent them uh, in Congress. Great. So yeah. once you joined Columbia, mm -hmm. something drew you back to the community board. Yes. Tell us your first impression um, after six months of being a member. Sure. Uh, you know, everyone told me that even though I had served on, I had worked with community boards and served as a public member for a while, that none of that was ever really like actually serving on, a, on as a board member. And I have to tell you that they are absolutely right. I thought I really knew exactly what, how I was going to feel and what committees I wanted to serve on. But really, once you walk in as a member and once you realize that you're voting on things, on issues that are so important Absolutely. to uh, people in your neighbor, both your neighbors and maybe people who live 20 blocks from you, um, it kind of takes on a whole new weight and significance. Uh, I, I realize that I take public testimony and the public session uh, a lot more seriously than I ever did um, in any of my other roles before. And uh, kind of presentations on issues that aren't necessarily right in my neighborhood, I'm uh, very careful about, just because I, I realize the significance that they may, that may have, not maybe on me as much as so as someone, you know, 20 blocks away. So it's, it's definitely been um, challenging, it's been humbling in a lot of ways, and um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely been a learning experience. I also love um, 
I also love that our community board in particular has a lot of institutional knowledge from older yes. members. It's that's that's the humbling part, really, <laughs> is that I think I know of an issue, and then I talk to someone who's worked on the issue for 20 years or more, you know, and so it's been wonderful to learn from them and to talk to older members and, and get their experience and, and sight and vision on the matter. So you mentioned some of our seasoned members, as yes. I like to call them. <laughs> um, you've joined the Parks Committee. Mm -hmm. What was something that drew you to that particular committee? Oh, uh, actually, it's a, it's a fairly good story. I was working uh, for the Congresswoman's office as her deputy chief, and someone told me that I had a meeting with um, two, two ch the ch co-chairs of the Parks Committee, um, who was then Barbara Rudder and Peggy Price. And they walked in and they sat me down and told me that they had a very kind of clear vision for the priorities of the Parks Committee and um, kind of fell down to two pieces. I remember them so clearly. Uh, the need for more open public space and the need for better advocacy and just maintenance of our East River Esplanade. And honestly, I was so blown away by their commitment and their passion and um, just enthusiasm for these, this project. It really made me think that if I ever had the opportunity to serve on a community board, that I was going to serve on parks. They definitely, uh, you know, got a, a loyal follower in me, and uh, <laughs> since then I, I haven't regretted that decision. I really think that those are some of the our, our most important issues, especially in terms of uh, sure. the resources that our community has. Um, and I, I love serving on the Parks Committee. Have there been any other committees that sort of have drawn you in that mm -hmm. perhaps may not have been your first choice? Mm -hmm. And now that you've been a member for six months or so, um, have piqued an interest? Sure. Well, I serve on two more right now, uh, officially at least. I serve on transportation, which um, I think is cer certainly kind of in the same line as, as parks, uh, shared resources, very important, really affects everyone, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, but I think that the most surprising committee that I'm, I'm serving on right now is the vending committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I really didn't think I was going to, I, I didn't think beforehand that I was going to join this committee. I credit uh, Michelle Birnbaum, another very you know knowledgeable person on our board. Yeah. She asked me to attend and I, I, I did and I uh, was kind of blown away by, first of all, the amount of community members that, that attend uh, vending committees. She packs the room every time. <laughs> um, and second of all, just how, uh, how very uniquely vending issues affect everyone's, uh, the community's quality of life. There are so many issues that I guess I never really think about since um, I don't necessarily walk down major thoroughways uh, when I go back and forth to work. Um, mm -hmm. But they're really important, and you know, I, I, our vending issues affect our small businesses, and that affects uh, kind of just the general uh, who is on our streets and who and what kind of businesses we have. It, it really does trickle down and affect every it affects everyone. So I would say the vending committee for sure. <laughs> are there any specific goals that are sort of driving your two-year stint on the board that you think are sort of your first priority? as a public servant now? I don't, I don't really know. I, uh, I think that originally I joined the, or I applied for the community board because when I uh, left Congressman Maloney's office, I didn't know how to say goodbye to some of the issues that we are working on. Certainly the Second Avenue subway was just so important and it is so important that I couldn't imagine not getting updates and hearing more about what was going on and being involved in, in the rollout of such a monumental infrastructure project. And things like the East River Esplanade, um, you know, it's it really is such a undervalued treasure in our community mm -hmm. that I had a really hard time thinking that I would not be involved in ways to preserve it and to make it special and to make sure that everyone kind of could enjoy it as much as they could. So. I, um, originally, I joined the board thinking, you know, this is how I was going to continue to work on these projects. And I think that I would like to continue that as much of a goal as that is. Um, I'd like to continue to work on these important issues. I'd like to continue to learn. And um, really, it's been very moving to talk to community members, um, both on the board and who come to these uh, to our meetings and just hear more about the issues that are affecting them. So leaving all the logistics kind of aside mm -hmm. from committees to the actual members, 
What do you think has been your first impression of now actually serving with these 50 mm -hmm. people who have come from all walks of life and many of them have been part of the community for decades mm -hmm. and you are newly minted? So my first impression of CB8 was was fairly mixed, to be honest. Uh, they, I had served on a bunch of different boards in, in uh, as my capacity as a community liaison for Congressman Maloney, and I always thought of CBA as the board that that really kind of um, discussed in detail every single every single um, item on the agenda. There was never, rarely ever any consensus. You know, they always really. Um, Always had uh, very detailed points to make that could all, that um, led to very long meetings, <laughs> but I I have to tell you I I love them for that and I think I respect everyone more for the fact that this is a board that doesn't take any agenda any point lightly, they take no community issue you know, lightly at all. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too small. <laughs> um, and that's really something different, to tell you the truth, than I've seen on other boards that kind of quickly move through agendas and um, kind of quickly pass things unanimous, unanimously. Uh, not that there aren't things that you can pass and that, that should everybody should be completely uh, in agreement on, but CBA truly um, takes every single community issue very seriously. They deliberate on every issue and, and really try to come to the best conclusions for their community. And, and so I, I think that I was a little intimidated at first, um, but I, I really respect the deliberation and the time and the passion, even if there is disagreement. I really respect um, that I know that everyone's coming at this with the same commitment towards you know, giving every issue its, its due time and due process. Absolutely. Yeah. As someone who's worked on multiple sides of the community, yeah. as a liaison and now as a community member, what value do you think being a member has brought to your life? It's tremendously, it's been a tremendous, brought a tremendous value to my life. Uh, as I said before, it's been very humbling to think about uh, my actions and my votes in a larger sense and how they affect the community. But it's also, uh, I also think that it's really engaging and, um, and for anyone, not just anyone who serves on the board, but anyone who comes in, I think it can be really empowering to see projects uh, that you bring forward move through and, um, and to see community members care about what you care about. Well, thank you so much for thank having you. us over. Thank you, Trish. And thank you for joining us tonight. Keep an eye out for more meet and greets with our community board members. And if you're interested in serving your community, please feel free to join us and are open to the public meetings every month. And to learn more about Manhattan Community Board 8, please visit our website at cbam.com.